I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about JavaScript formatting, pie charts, SVG animation, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a couple of free UI kits, which are themes for Bootstrap, or oh, they're good. built on Bootstrap. Bootstrap being the framework that we talk about literally all the time on this show. That's right. It's the front-end framework for everybody. <laughs> all right. So here, uh, if you didn't know, you can actually apply themes to Bootstrap. And these themes are completely free. They're available on GitHub here. Um, this first theme uh, looks like it's called Dark Velvet. And I'm definitely feeling the, uh, the Dark Velvet. Look at that. It almost looks like the, uh, the uh, Treehouse show set today. Yeah. Um, this almost. one is vanilla cream. Except mm. a little more interesting. Looks delicious. Uh, this one is called Metro Vibes. It looks very similar to the Metro style on uh, Windows. This one is called Modern Touch. Also looks uh, pretty flat, kind of Windows or iOS 7-like. And uh, that's it. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple more links today. Yeah, but, no. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot to say about those, but they're just really nice looking themes, and you should definitely check them out. Yeah, the, you know, they're pretty nice even, um, especially if you do want to override something in Bootstrap and maybe can't figure out how, go see how they did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, use that for your own nefarious purposes. Next up, we have a JavaScript library called formatter.js. So this is for input fields. Let's say you have somebody and you want them to enter a phone number, but you want to actually restrict it to looking like a phone number. You can put little parentheses there and make it limited to having them enter different combinations of letters and numbers. So there are a few different options. I'll just take you straight to the demo here. Here's an example if you want to enter a credit card. Now, um, this is my actual credit card, so don't use it, please. It's uh, the numbers four and two over and over again. Okay, got it. Yeah, but you can see as, uh, you know, as I type it, it just kind of limits it to that. And then if I type, like uh, I'm trying to type letters right now and it is not working and I'm like kind of freaking out. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to enter those. Thanks, I'm a user of your website. I hmm. just saved you a ton of time. Boom. Yeah, same thing with phone numbers. Here is my actual phone number. It's actually random numbers I just typed in there. But again, you know, it's limited to just what I type in there. Now, if you want to use different patterns, if you want to use your own patterns, there's a very easy syntax to do it. So check it out. Really, really nice project, formatter.js. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Lazy Line Painter. What'd you call me? Uh, I called you a Lazy Line Painter. Okay. No, actually, it's just the name of this website. Oh, good. So, so if we look here, uh, you can see that we have this really cool animation of this line drawing, and it's just being drawn right into onto the page. How the heck is that happening? No, Magic. It's not an animated GIF. It is actually an SVG. What? I know. Crazy. So... Here's how it works. You have this wonderful SVG drawing of how it works, actually. So you can go ahead and export your line art from Illustrator as an SVG. You have to make sure that there's no fills or no closed path. So this does just need to be a line drawing. Uh, crop your artboard and then go ahead and drop your SVG into the SVG to lazy line converter, which is right here. So you can go ahead and just drag and drop your SVG file right here. And then it will go ahead and generate some code for you. And you need to import jQuery and Raphael. And you also need to use the lazy line painter code. But uh, after you put that all together, you'll end up with a really nice line drawing, just like the, the one you see here. And it will go ahead and animate and draw right onto the screen. So pretty cool stuff. Um, there's lots of uses that you could you know, go ahead and use that for maybe for uh, marketing purposes. If you want to go ahead and create like a really nice marketing site where elements are being drawn onto the page, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and it, you know, if that's not enough for you, if you want to create your own custom animations out of SVGs, we have a project now called Snap SVG, which will let you take any SVG and it gives you a really nice API that's easy to use 
for animating all these different SVGs. Now, that project, Lazy Line Painter, uses Raphael.js. Snap SVG is going to be an alternative to Raphael.js. Uh, now, as you expect, it's pretty easy to use, but let's just see some demos first up. Check this out. Look at this. This is a coffee maker, right? And wow. What? Let's see. What do you want, Nick? Do you want a latte? All right, here you go. Have a latte. Look at that. It's animating right now. Oh, wow, look. There's your latte. Wow, Boom. that's a latte SVG. Yeah, isn't it? Wow. What? You want to see more? All right, here. Here's a mocha. You want a mocha? All right, you got a mocha. That's 33% espresso, 67% milk. Man, I think I'm going to make Snap SVG part of my daily grind. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay, next up, let's, let's take a look at the globe, because I can't imagine there's really a lot of puns there. Uh, what should I do? Should I click that? Yeah, let me click it. What? Click that. We're going on a trip together, just yeah. like Indiana Jones. Amazing. <laughs> I don't know where we're going, but hey, you going, we fly you there. So, if we take a look at the documentation, uh, there, it, it's really easy. You know, you can add elements, uh, animate elements, you give it the attributes, the duration, callbacks. As you can see, there's a ton of different options and events that you can attach to. Go ahead and check out the Getting Started document, which really walks you through everything that you can do with Snap SVG. And uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. You can find a link to this in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us on iTunes at the Treehouse Show. Next up is physics.js. Now, as the name implies, this is some JavaScript that allows you to implement physics. What? I know. Amazing. It is, it is very aptly named. Uh, if you look here on the home page, we can go ahead and drag these elements and whoa, look at that. They go what? ahead and bounce and collide with one another. Pretty amazing. Uh, I'm pretty sure what you did, just did was against the laws of physics where you lifted that up Pre in midair. Pretty close. So let's go ahead and look at a couple demos here. Uh, here's some simple bouncing balls, but uh, if you want to get more complicated, we have a fruitcake on wheels. <laughs> so uh, I know what I want for Christmas. Yeah. Look at that. Fruitcake on wheels. It, That's uh, awesome. Just bounces all around there. We also have some cloth simulations happening here. Oh. So we talked about terrible cloth on one other treehouse show. Yeah, but this isn't. Uh, Quite as terrible. This is this is even better than that. Uh, look at that. You can go ahead and just grab it and uh, put holes in this cloth and just tear it right off. Pretty amazing. So there's a lot of cool demos here, and for each one of them, you can go ahead and click on the code and see how that particular demo is working. And of course, this is all on GitHub, so you can go ahead and check it out there. Now I'm going to go uh, back to the site here. One thing to keep in mind is that you will probably need to use the demos quite a bit for reference because if we click through to the documentation here, while some areas are fairly complete, if you look at the fundamentals here, lots of great stuff there. On the other hand, if you click on something like collisions, it still says to do. So there's still a couple of holes in the documentation, but for something that's fairly new, that is to be expected. Yeah, there you go. So, pretty cool stuff, though. Yeah, really, really neat. Uh, next up, we have a library called StickUp, which is used for attaching elements to the top of a web page as you're scrolling. Um, this is going to be really useful for navigation if you want that to be visible as you're scrolling up and down a site. Now, this is really super simple. Not much to say about it, but it's a jQuery plugin. You can see as we are on the site right here, as I start scrolling down, this attaches right to the top of the screen. And as you scroll down the page, you'll notice that different parts of this become active. So, uh, like I said, very, very easy to use. Just a simple jQuery plugin. And as soon as the document is ready, just call the stickup method on it. And that is it. So, again, not much to say. Cool plugin. If you need to have a sticky navigation bar, check that out if you're not using something that already supports it. it seems like it would be really good for creating one page websites. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, next up is this really cool blog post called Creating Non-Rectangular Layouts with CSS Shapes. Now, recently the CSS Shapes module was introduced by the W3C, and actually it's very much in flux right now. Browser support is very scant. I think on like the nightly WebKit builds you can get it, um, and I think you have to like I think you have to use Chrome Canary uh, oh, wow. right now. I think that's the only uh, browser that actually supports it. And there's actually two competing standards for this. <laughs> so very much in flux. But the reason we're even talking about it right now is because it is so cool. It offers a lot of new possibilities 
for laying out your web page. So if we go ahead and scroll down this wonderfully detailed post, you can go ahead and see some images of what this actually enables. So here we have this circular shape and we actually have text flowing right around it. That's pretty cool. If we scroll down a little further here, we see this example of this web page about the Eiffel Tower and you can see this text kind of in a trapezoid shape, very similar to uh, the opening crawl to Star Wars. So if you want to do that, this would be maybe a, a great way to do it as well. Now, speaking of that, you could actually do this using CSS3 transforms, but the problem with that is that it doesn't affect the actual layout of the page, so it doesn't reflow the content, it just kind of transforms it. Uh, if we scroll down a little further here though, we can see what this code actually looks like. We use this uh, property called shape outside and shape margin, and then we use this CSS function called polygon, and we pass it a couple of X and Y values, and that's how we go ahead and create our shapes. Pretty cool stuff. There's a lot more detail here that I didn't cover, but definitely be sure to check this out because CSS shapes are really going to revolutionize the way that we can lay out web pages. Yeah, I guess you should read that to stay ahead of the curve. Next up, we have a project called Pizza Pie Charts. This is a project from Zurb that lets you implement uh, semantic pie charts that are also responsive using just a little bit of JavaScript and optionally some CSS. Wow, the curves were a really nice segue there. I know. Sounds like we've come full circle. I know, piece of cake or pie. Let's go ahead and see how that works here. Um, we've got an example pie chart on here and uh, here's some different possible pizza toppings. So you see we've got pepperoni and look at that, just kind of pops out, shows you what's going on. Uh, with the different percentages. Now, okay, you want to implement this on your site, how do you do it? Well, it's actually really, really easy. You just throw in a couple of scripts here. You got the pizza.css, jQuery, and uh, snap SVG, which we just talked about. How topical is that? And then just give it an unordered list. Uh, as, and after you do that, just give the list items, data value attributes, and then everything is done. So, okay, once you have the chart, you can easily style it using SAS. Um, that's, uh, that's really all I have to say about it. Super cool project. Really great to have the responsive pie charts. Um, so check that out. Really nice project. Very cool stuff. Well, I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at JCypher. Definitely follow me. If you want more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash GoTreehouse. Or check us out on iTunes. Just search for The Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, business, mobile, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.